Can you please quickly write down this third point? Along with making the earth and the heavens, God made everything in them. Along with making the earth and the heavens, God made everything in them. God did not leave the earth and the heavens to be empty. He filled up the earth and the heavens with substance. He filled up the earth and, and the heavens with living creatures. He made wonderful living creatures and positioned them on earth and in the heavens. This is a wonderful mystery. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 11, Exodus chapter 20 verse 11, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. In six days he made heaven and earth, he made heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that in them. All that are in them, all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. He made all the living creatures that are in heaven and that are on earth. Balakush kalabalakwataka balakatabara. Legadush kele balakatabara. Making use of the six undetermined periods of time, God was able to create all the living creatures. And He has given the church the power to control all these living creatures. We can make use of these living creatures for the glorification of the Father. We can make use of this living creature for the magnification of the Father. He made the living creatures. Apart from man, He made the living creatures. And He gave man the dominion over them. He gave the church the dominion over them. In Nehemiah chapter 9 verses, Nehemiah chapter 9 verses, Brakush Kalabalakwatakabalaka. He said, Thou, even that, Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts. Can you please underline that? With all their hosts. The earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. The host of heaven worshipeth thee. He made all things that are in heaven, all their hosts, and all things that are on earth, and all things that are in the seas, and preserved them all. And the host of heaven worship him for the wonders of creation. The host of heaven worship him for the works of creation. Yes, Lord. Can you please open to Isaiah, the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 5. Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 5. It, is, it said, Thus hear the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth 
and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth bread unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein, and spirit to them that walk therein. He created the heavens and the earth, and all the inhabitants of heavens and earth. All the inhabitants of heavens and earth. Maybe you don't understand this mystery yet. Let us go to Isaiah, please. Isaiah quickly. Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? For all those things as my hand made, and all those things are being, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a country spirit, and trembled at my word. All these things my hand has made. And so all these things came to be. Came to be. All these things my hand has made. So God has made all the inhabitants of heaven and the earth. All the principalities and powers in heaven and on earth were made by God. We can command the principalities and powers. We can command fallen angels. We can rebook fallen angels. We can eradicate fallen angels and demons from our territory. Because we have the power to do so. All the forces of heaven were created by God. And the power that made them is in the church. Can you please open to Act of Apostles? Act of the Apostles. Chapter 14 verse 15. Act of the Apostles. Chapter 14, verse 15. He says, And saying, Sir, why do ye do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. That was Paul and Barnabas. Which made heaven and earth and see, and all things that are daring, you should turn unto the living God. Let's look at it from verse 14, so that you can understand. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, heard of the people, that they are worshipping them like God. They rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. Crying out. We also are men of like passion with you. And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are dearing. All things that are there in. We must not worship the creatures. We must worship the creator of the creature. The creator, only the creator, get this please. Only the creator of the creatures must be worshipped. Only the creator of all these creatures must be worshipped. We must not worship the creature. Man must not worship any creature and any mortal image. Man must not worship any image, either wooden or mortal image, or molded image, or living creature, 
All these creatures must not be worshipped, whether living or non living. Because we carry a wonder inside of us, a God in that, inside of us that deserves a worship. We carry the nature of God in us. We must worship something that is greater than us, not something that is lesser than us. Do you know that the church is greater than the 24 elders in heaven? Do you know that the church is greater in position than the archangels and angels in heaven? The church is greater in power in authority, in dominion, than the seraphim and the cherubims. We are greater than the seraphims and the cherubims. We have the authority of God in us. We must not worship the creatures. God made everything in this world for the purpose of man. For the sake of man, he made everything in this world and he has given unto man the dominion to control all these things. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. He said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family in heaven and earth is named. So there are families in heaven and earth. The whole family. So there are a lot of families of living creatures in heaven and on earth. And we are to bow our knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we can receive the strength to control the families in heaven and on earth. There are families in heaven and earth, whether physical or spiritual. There are physical families and there are spiritual families. There are physical beings. The physical creatures and there are spiritual beings, the invisible creatures. And we can only exercise our authority and dominion over them as we worship the Father. This is the mystery of creation. The more you worship the Father, the more the authority over these living creatures. May you begin to exercise authority over these living creatures. I say, may you begin to exercise authority over physical and spiritual creatures. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God made everything in this world. He didn't leave the earth and the heavens as an empty environment. He did not abandon the empty earth and heavens. He made living creatures to inhabit this environment. He made living creatures to inhabit this environment. He made everything in them, both living creatures and non-living materials. He made the rock, he made the stone, he made a lot of things. He made all kinds of living creatures, both plants and animals, to inhabit heavens and earth. And the church must exercise her dominion over these creatures.
in Revelation chapter 10 verse 6. Revelation chapter 10 verse 6. He said, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, that are therein, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. He who created heaven, and the things that are therein, and the earth, and the things that are therein, by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and earth, and the things that are therein, he made heaven and earth and the things that are therein. And we must control all these things that are there. All the things that are in heaven and that are on earth must be controlled by man. You have to control them. He made them. And he feed the heavens and the earth with substance. You have the power to create and feed what you have created with substance. You have the power to fill your empty marriage with substance. You have the power to fill your empty business with substance. You have the power of creativity and innovation in you. You can create anything and fill that thing with substance, with relevance, with importance, with value. You can add value and virtue to every works of your hand. You can create value and create virtues in your society. You can create an atmosphere of relevance in your, in your society by engaging the power of creation in you. I want to be relevant. Can you tell God right now? Say, I want to be relevant. Make me to be relevant, Lord. I want to be relevant. I don't just want to live with this power and without demonstrating it. I want to be relevant with the power that is in me. I want to be relevant with the power that is in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing I discover is that God made light alongside the darkness. In the works of creation, God did not destroy the darkness. God made light alongside the darkness. And by doing this, God controls the cycle of day and night. In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 to 5. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 to 5. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning, were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. So what he created on the first day was the light. What was created by God on the first day was the light. The light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. God did not fight with the darkness. God only creates the light. God did not fight with the darkness. God only creates the light that can silence the darkness. You don't have to fight with the darkness in your life. You have to create light. You must allow the light to shine. So that the darkness in your life, in your destiny, in your ministry, in your society will not shine. God made light alongside the darkness. He did not destroy the darkness. But he made the light. You have the power to make light. You have power to create light. And to make light. 
you have the power to demonstrate light. The light is in the church. The church is the carrier of that light. We are to shine as light and like light in the kingdom of our Father. We are the light of the world and we are to shine in the world of darkness. No darkness is permitted to raise up ugly head in the congregation of light. The congregation of light is the congregation of the sons of God. No light, I mean no light, I mean no light. Every believer is a carrier of that light. Every believer is a carrier of the light. You have the light. You can decree and declare it and it shall be established. You can demonstrate that light in your society. You can demonstrate that light in your community. Can we go to 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light of the knowledge of the glory. The revelation knowledge of God in you is the light. And the kingdom of Christ is the kingdom of revelation knowledge. We have the revelation knowledge in the kingdom of Christ. And you must allow this revelation knowledge to shine. Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness? If you want to stop the operation of darkness, you must allow the revelation knowledge of Christ to flow out of you. The revelation knowledge of God is the solution to the darkness in our world. Can you please chant in tongue? Just chant in tongue for one minute. Breka tosh kete bala kataba. Yeke de katosh kele bala. Leke de ketosh kete bala kataba ya. Ne patos katabala. Li gaga ga ida shakata bala kataba. Can you please open to Psalm 74 verse 16. Psalm 74 verse 16. Psalm 74, verse 16. He said, The day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. He prepared the light and the sun. So this indicates, this particular text indicates that this may well be alluding to God's creation of the day and the night. He made the day, he made the light, he did not destroy the darkness, he made the light. Let there be light and there was light. You can also say let there be light and there will be light. You have that power in you. 
you must understand these kingdom realities. Can you please go to Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7? The protocol please. Isaiah chapter 45. The media. Let me project Isaiah 45 verse 7. The protocol, please, can you control the people under the anointing? Please control the people under the anointing, please. Thank you. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I make peace and create evil. I form light and create darkness. <laughs> this is speaking of God's creation of life and darkness. I form light. That light is the life of man. I form life and create darkness. Anywhere there is light, there is life. Because life is the secret, is the mystery behind light. Without life, light cannot shine. There is a life responsible for the light. And that life is Christ Jesus. We have the Christ Jesus in us. We have Christ in us. The carrier of the life. The totality of the life. The hope of the glory is in the church right now, which is the life of Christ in the church. He laid down his life that he might take it again. And he has delivered the life to the church. We are carrying the life that can generate light. So the church can generate light continuously. Day and night, the church can generate light. We can command light to shine in every area of our life. And light we, we emerge. Why can't you declare right now and say, let there be light in every area of my life? In every facet of my life, Lord, let there be light. Let there be light. I decree and declare light. Let there be light in every area of my being. In every area of my ministry, let there be light. Let there be light in every area of my being. In every area of my ministry, let there be light. I decree and declare light, let there be light. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you know that alongside the works of creation and during the works of creation, God made the sky? Can you write it down? God made the sky. This is another wonderful point. Point number five, please. God made the sky. There is a great mystery in God making the sky. And God made the sky. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verses to 8. Genesis chapter 1, verses to 8. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. The second day. The second day. Which represents the joining. The union of Christ and his church. Although light which was made in the first day is a symbol of unity. But there is another union in the second day. Two represent that union. Two is a number of agreement. 
between the heaven and the earth. Two is a number of agreement between God and the church. Two is a number of agreement between Christ and his church. Two is a number of covenant. God made the sky of covenant. You must make the sky of covenant until you have that sky of covenant. You cannot really break through. So you must work earnestly, spiritually, to establish a sky of covenant in your destiny and in your ministry. The moment you can produce a sky of covenant, your ministry will operate far above limitation. Making sky does not mean sky is your limit. But far above the heavens is your limit. There is an atmosphere far above the heavens. This atmosphere is your limit. But one thing I want you to know is that you have the power to make sky in every area of your life. To make the sky means to reach the top. You have the power to get to the top. And you cannot get to the top without a covenant. A covenant must be established between you and your maker. You must align yourself with the covenant of Christ. Which is the new covenant. Before you can operate far above the sky level. God made the sky. You must make the sky. In your work of creation on it, you must make the sky. This is a proof of your breakthrough. Unlimited breakthrough in the land of the living. In Psalm 19 verse 1. Psalm 19 verse 1. Quickly go to Psalm 19, verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament showeth his handiwork. The sky displays God's marvelous craftsmanship. The sky displays God's marvelous craftsmanship. The sky is a proof of supernatural results. Mm-hmm. The sky being made by God is a proof of God's divine power. People want to see the sky before they will believe in you. If you want to demonstrate the divine power, you must make the sky. I mean you must make your sky. Let people see your sky in this world. You have to get to the top. You have to produce results. Divine results. People want to see supernatural results. Before they will believe in you. You have to produce results. People don't argue with results. And your result is your sky. He made the sky on the second day. Not on the last day. He made the sky on the second day. You have to make your sky early in life. Are you really working earnestly to make your sky early in life? The second day, at the early phase of life, you, you have to make your sky. Draw the pattern of your sky and make your sky. Launch out your ministry early in life. Manifest your God's given destiny early in life. At the age of 30, Jesus launched his ministry and ended his ministry at 33. He started early. He was an early riser. 
in the realms of men. You must be an early riser by making your sky. Please, can we go to Proverbs? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 27 to 28. Labra Labala. Proverbs chapter 8, specifically verse 27 to 8. The media, can you help us please? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 27 to 28. He said, When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, that was Jesus speaking. Jesus was the wisdom speaking there in Proverbs chapter 8. He was the wisdom of God. He said, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the clouds above, I was there. So Christ Jesus, the head of the church, was there. If the head of the church was there, then the church also was there. Because the church cannot be detached from Christ. The church is the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are connected to Christ. And we can access the mystery of creation through Christ. Because the same anointing that flows on Christ and through Christ also flows through the church. The same anointing in Christ is also in the church. Christ is the completeness of God's anointing. And that complete anointing is in the church. We can access the mysteries of creation. And engage the mysteries of creation in this current dispensation. When he made firm the skies above, the church also was there because Christ was there. He made the sky and the sky meets the sea. The sky meets the sea. There was an horizon of the sky that met the sea during the creation. And up to today, the sky still meets the sea. The mystery can only be unraveled by Christ and the church. This wonderful mystery can only be unraveled by Christ and his church. Can we go to Job? Job chapter 26, verse 7. Quickly open to Job. Job chapter 26, verse 7. He said, He stretched out the knot over the empty place and angered the earth upon nothing. He stretched out the knot over the empty place, the sky. He stretched out the sky. The north represents the northern sky. So this verse may be referring to God maintaining the sky. God was maintaining the skies. You need God to maintain and sustain your sky. Your sky is your greatness, is the height of your achievement in this world. You need God to sustain your achievements in this world. You have to make your sky by engaging the power of God in you. A sky made without God is a counterfeit. A sky established without God is a counterfeit. Such a sky is a counterfeit sky. You need the genuine sky, which is the genuine greatness, the genuine influence, the genuine impact, the genuine achievement in this world. And you can only make this sky of greatness by engaging the power of God in you.
In Job, please go to Job. La patos kete barush kalabala. Le bato ide katosh kalabala. Le gadosh kele bala kataba. Le gadosh kele bala. Job chapter 28, verse 25 to 26. Job 28, verse 25 to 26. It says, To make the weight for the wind, and he weighted the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder. So God established natural phenomena. He established natural phenomena. And he established natural phenomena that occur in the sky. Without sky, there is no lightning or thunder. He decree a rain. Then the weight for the wind is from the sky. To make the weight for the wind. And he weighted the waters by measure. That is the work of the sky. Because the cloud contains the bodies of waters. When he made a decree for the rain to come from the sky and a way for the lightning of the thunder from the sky, these are natural phenomena. They are natural phenomena. And we can only see these natural phenomena in the sky. I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. For your ministry to experience some supernatural phenomena, you must establish your sky. For your ministry, please write it down, please. Write this down, please. Write it down. For your ministry to experience some wonders on it you must establish your sky for your ministry to experience or supernatural phenomena or supernatural phenomena on this earth you must establish your sky if there is no sky there is no phenomena As we have climatological phenomena, so we have supernatural phenomena in the kingdom of God. And the church is the seat of this supernatural phenomena. But there must be a spiritual sky established before you can experience this phenomena. You must establish the sky of greatness before you can experience some supernatural manifestations in your ministry. Your sky of greatness must be established. And this sky of greatness is Pasana in the works of creation. God made his own sky. So in your work of creation on earth, you have to make your sky. If you cannot make your sky, you cannot make impact. And the power to create your own sky of greatness is in you. Begin to create it. Can you please decree and declare right now that as from today, I create my sky of greatness. By the authority of that is in me. I create my sky of greatness in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us quickly open to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Back to the work of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 to 10. It says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 
And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the sea, and God saw that it was good. See, God saw that it was good. There was a partitioning. There was a partitioning in the works of God. There was a partitioning in the works of creation. God did not just create without partitioning. There was a partitioning in the work of creation. There are demarcations in the work of creation. Can you please write this point, please? Write this point. It's very important for you. God made land and sea. Partitioning the land off from the sea. God made land and sea. Partitioning the land all from the sea. He partitioned the land from the sea. Off from the sea. For you to create something that will be very good. It was good. That was the best language that could be used then. That it was good. But to me, it was far more than excellent. It was far more than excellent. It was far better than excellent. And God partitioned the land off from the sea. You must partition your destiny. You must partition your ministry. You must disconnect your destiny and your ministry from some things that could hinder the manifestation of powers in your life. There are things that can hinder the man manifestation of God's power in your life. And you have to partition your ministry and your destiny from these things. Without land, there won't be fruitfulness. And God partitioned the land where there will be fruitfulness from the sea. The living creatures in the sea also will be fruitful. But there are some creatures on the land. These creatures of, on the land, if they are created in the sea, they won't be fruitful. And if the creatures in the sea were brought to the land, they won't be fruitful. So for these creatures to be fruitful, they must be positioned at the right atmosphere. They are located in the right atmosphere. They have to be positioned in the right realms of productivity and production. So God positioned the right creature in the right location. God positioned the right creature in the right location. And that is why you must ask yourself, are you at the right location? Are you standing at the right location? Are you where you're supposed to be? Is your ministry planted where your ministry is supposed to be? If your ministry is not at the right location, your ministry cannot blossom. It is impossible for you to position a goat inside the sea and expect the goat to produce fruit. I mean, it is impossible for you to position a goat in the sea and expect the goat to produce offspring. It is impossible, brethren. The right organism must be in the right location. The right organism must be in the right environment. Are you in the right environment? You must ask yourself. You must ask yourself this question. 
is your investment located in the right environment where it can blossom. There must be partitioning. Can you tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, there must be a partitioning. There must be partitioning. Please partition your destiny and partition your ministry. In Psalm 95, let's go to Psalm 95. Psalm 95, verse 5. Black Ushkele Balakwatakaba. The sea is is and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. You see, he partitioned the sea from the land. He partitioned the sea from the land. His hands formed the dry land. He formed the dry land out of the sea. In Jonah, let's look at Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. Blackush kele balakwata kapara. Jonah chapter 1, verse 9. Jonah chapter 1, verse 9. And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Jonah confirmed this. He made the sea and the dry land. He made it. The prophet Jonah confirmed this, that God made the sea. And the dry land. He partitioned the sea from the dry land. You cannot have a ministry without partitioning. If you do that, you will fail in this world. You must partition your ministry. And you must partition your destiny. Let's look at Revelation. Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. He says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come, and they worship, and worship Him, that made heaven and earth and the sea, and the fountains of waters, that made earth and the sea. And the fountains of water, he even partitioned the fountains of water. He partitioned the springs of water. God made all and he partitioned all. He made all and he partitioned all. According to the proverb of Solomon, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 20. It says, By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the cloud drop down the dew. The depths, which means the land, the earth, are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. The clouds drop down the dew. So the water bodies were separated from the land. The depth represent the land. And the clouds represent the body of waters. Can we please go to Job? Job 38, Job chapter 38, verse, starting from verse 8. Let's look at it from verse 8. Job chapter 38, starting from verse 8. He said, All who shut up the sea with doors, when it break forth, as if it had, it had, it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Itato shall thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. He made the sea with doors, he even made doors to lock the sea. 
so that the flood from the sea will not destroy the earth. He locked the sea. He controlled the sea. And he made the earth. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, that was in verse 9, verse 9. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. Thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. This represents the darkness that initially was over the surface of the sea. The thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. That was the darkness that was over the face of the waters. Can we look at Psalm 37? Psalm 30, 33. Let's look at Psalm 33. Psalm 33 specifically, verse 7. It says, He gathered the waters of the sea together as an heap. He laid up the depth in storehouses. He gathered it. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. As a heap made by the farmer. He puts the deep in storehouses. The deeps. These deeps are the depths. He puts the depths in storehouses. He placed restriction over the water bodies. So that these water bodies will not cause destruction. There are some things in your life you must place restriction over. So that it will not affect the operation of your ministry. For the dynamic power in your destiny to function very well in this world. You must place restriction over some affairs of this world. You must place some restrictions over the affairs of life. You must place some restrictions over some things in your life. There must be a level of restriction before you can blossom in this world. Before you can grow and glow to the sky level of greatness and above the sky level of greatness. You have to place some restriction over some things in your life. Your ability to place these restrictions is called discipline. Your ability to place this restriction is called discipline. On the third day, God was able to demonstrate his discipline over the works of creation. And God was able to exercise his discipline over the works of creation. Remember that three is a number of divine perfection. Three is a number of divine perfection. So on the third day, his discipline was made perfect. There was a manifestation of that divine power. On the third day, the divine power was earnestly engaged in the process of separation. There must be a separation. If there is no separation, there can be no manifestation. In Psalm, let's go to Psalm. That same Psalm, Psalm 104. Let's go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104, starting from verse 5 to 9. Let's pick it up from verse 5. In verse 5, it says, Who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever? Thou covered it with the deep, as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains initially. At thy rebuke they fled, you see. In verse 7, it says, At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys. Unto the place which thou hast founded for them. 
thou hast set a band that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. You see. Initially, there was earth. Initially, there was land, but waters were covering the land. And at his rebook, they fled. You have the power to create. What you are about to create has already been created. What you are about to create has already been created. It has been created. Thousands of years ago, you are just to command, you are to rebook, and what has been created shall appear at the voice of your word. You are to rebook everything that is covering what has been created so that what has been created can be revealed to the world. You must rebook everything, every power of darkness that is covering what has been created. It has been created, please. Begin to command and let all the things that has been created emerge. Let them come to the surface. The waters were covering the mountains. But at the rebook of God, at the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away, they disappeared. They took to flight. <laughs> the power to create and partition is in the church. You can remove that garment that is covering your destiny by the power that is in you. You can partition your destiny away from darkness. You can partition your destiny away from every walk of darkness. You can separate your ministry away from every walks of darkness. By the power that is in you. Can we go back to that proverb? Proverb chapter 8. Let's go back to proverb. The proverb of Solomon. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 is a chapter on wisdom. And that wisdom is Christ. Proverb chapter 8. Starting from verse 24. Let's pick it up from verse 24. It says, When there was no depth, I was brought forth. That was wisdom. And that was Christ. And when there, was, there were no fountains, abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the east, was I brought forth. In verse 26, He said, While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the feet, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, upon the face of the water, I was there. When he established the clouds above, the water bodies above, I was there. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep, I was there. In verse 29, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandments that the waters should not pass his commandments when he appointed the foundations of the earth you see he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his boundary And he appointed the foundations of the earth. And these foundations is in Christ and is in the church. The foundations is in Christ and Christ is in the church. And the water bodies did not transgress his command. The water bodies did not transgress his command. They obey his command with immediate manifestation.
la bakushka la balakataba. You can speak like that, and and everything will obey your command. You have that grace upon you to speak, and everything will obey your command. Are we still here together, please? Are we here together? You don't have to be tired of revelation knowledge, because revelation knowledge is the key that can unlock. The spiritual atmosphere is the key that can unlock the realm of the spirit. Is the key that can unlock the realm of the supernatural. Is the key that can open the gates of heaven of heavens. You need the revelation knowledge. Can you please bear with me and open to Jeremiah? The book of Jeremiah, chapter five, verse twenty-two. Jeremiah chapter five, verse twenty-two. He says, "Fear ye not me, fear the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? We shall place the sand for the band of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. The waves cannot prevail." Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. They cannot pass over this, over the land. The sea, the waves of the sea, cannot pass over the land. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over. Though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. They can never prevail. Because God gave a command, you can give command, and you can give a particular command, and it shall be established. And the kingdom of darkness will find it so difficult to reverse your command. You have that power that is irreversible. Whatsoever you lock shall remain locked, and whatsoever you lose shall remain loose. You have that power. To partition, the power of partitioning has been given to the church. The power of partitioning, the power of separation. You have the power to separate anything. To partition, the power of restriction has been given to the church. The church is the carrier of all these powers. Can we go to the book of Amos? Please quickly open to Amos, Amos chapter four, verse thirteen. In Amos chapter four, verse thirteen, it says, "For lo, he that formed the mountains and created the wind and declared unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness and trended upon the high places of the earth." The Lord, the Lord of hosts, is His name. He formed the mountains. You see, He formed the mountains and He partitioned the mountains. He formed the wind and He partitioned the wind. He formed man and partitioned man. He make morning darkness. He make it morning darkness and He partitioned morning darkness. He also tread upon high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is His name, and the church is the carrier of that name. We have inherited that name. The imprint of that name is upon the church. We can manifest that same glory. We can behave like God on it by partitioning our world. We can partition our world. We can place restriction on some things in our world, and it shall remain like that forever. Hallelujah. Legadosh kele balakwata kaba. Can you be chanting tongue and give glory to God for giving you the power to partition all things? Le patos kete barush kala bala. Legadosh kele balakwata kaba. Yes, Lord. 
Jesus Christ is Lord. Can we please go open to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. Let's go back to Genesis. Our Bible reference in this psalm, Genesis, that is the central point for all these mysteries. Genesis chapter 1, let's pick it up from verse 11, where we stop. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, you see, whose seed was in itself. After his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So God made vegetation. Can you write it? God made vegetation. And God making vegetation is part of the works of creation. Which were wrought on the third day. And in the evening and the morning were the third day. He made it on the third day, the vegetations. You know, vegetation has a particular color, which is color green. The color green represents vegetation. And that green means fruitfulness, productivity. Which came into existence on the third day. This vegetation leaped into existence on the third day. Vegetations were created on the third day. As we all know that number three is a number of divine perfection. Number three is a number of trinity. So there was fruitfulness, there was perfection on the third day. As God made vegetation, you can also make vegetation in your word. You can declare, let there be vegetation in your ministry. Vegetation represents fruitfulness. When you say, let there be vegetation, you are saying, let there be fruitfulness. Let there be productivity. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be victory. Let there be sources. You can decree and declare this into your word. And God made vegetation on the third day. You can also make your vegetation on the third day. If you want to, you can. I say you can. You have the power to do so. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 to 9. Let's look at chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Starting from verse 4 to 9. He said, these are the generations of the heavens. And of the earth, when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the ground and breath into his nostril, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden. You see, that is where we are going. The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, you see, underline that, every tree, which means every fruitfulness, that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life also in the midst of all this tree, there is a tree of life called Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus is the spiritual vegetation in the kingdom of Christ. Christ Jesus is the spiritual vegetation in the kingdom of God which is established on earth. The kingdom of God on earth is the church. 
and we are carrying a spiritual vegetation, which is Christ, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden. The tree of life is also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge is in the midst of the garden, and we have the tree, other trees that are good, that are pleasant to the eyes. So if the tree of life, which represents spiritual vegetation, fruitfulness, spiritual fruitfulness, which is responsible for every other kinds of fruitfulness, if this spiritual fruitfulness, I mean spiritual vegetation, is in the church, we can manifest this spiritual vegetation. We can engage the mystery of spiritual vegetation, the tree of life. He gave a command to apps, to this tree, to grow out of the land. And these trees grew out of the land, you see. In verse 5, he says, And every herb of the feet before it grew, for the Lord God has not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist, in verse 6, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. You see, it watered the whole face, and God planted a garden eastward in Eden. In verse 6, he planted a garden. He planted fruitfulness. That garden is a garden of fruitfulness. And we still have that garden right now. The garden that was lost in Genesis is now the church of God. The church is the spiritual garden. We are the garden of Eden. The body of Christ is the garden of Eden. Is the current garden of Eden. And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden. Can you rejoice right now because you have a new garden, a spiritual garden right now. The body of Christ is the spiritual garden. A garden that is loaded with spiritual vegetation. Nothing is permitted to be barren in this kingdom. Because everything in this kingdom is carrying its seed. You are carrying your seed in you. So if you create one thing, that thing must carry a seed. If you create a business, the business must carry a seed to create another business. So a single business created by you must produce multiple business. A single investment created by you must produce other investments. Because that particular investment is carrying a seed. That is invisible to our physical eyes. This is a mystery. The mystery of spiritual vegetation. And these things are carrying seed. Each according to its kind. Each according to its kind. Trees bearing fruit. In which is their seed. According to its kind. The seed is according to its kind. It will not produce another fruit for you. The seed will produce the same kind of fruit. The mystery of spiritual vegetation. You cannot germinate what is not in you. You can only germinate what is in you. If you are carrying Christ in you, you can only germinate Christ. If you are carrying Christ in you, you can only produce Christ. Christ must be formed in you before you can produce Christ in your world. And God made vegetation on the third day. The mystery of spiritual vegetation. The vegetation is in the church. The body of Christ is the spiritual vegetation. The garden of Eden in this current dispensation is the body of Christ. And we must manifest this fruitfulness that is in us. There is a level of fruitfulness that cannot be quantified by this word. 
there is a level of fruitfulness in the body of Christ that cannot be assessed by the children of the world. We have that level, high level of fruitfulness that is beyond the fruitfulness that is in the world. And there is a power behind the operation of this fruitfulness. This is the mystery of spiritual germination and the mystery of spiritual vegetation. You must germinate what is in you. There is a seed in you that is divine. You must allow this divine seed to germinate out of you. Let's go to Psalm 104. Open to Psalm 104. In Psalm 104, verse 14 to 16. Psalm 104, verse 14 to 16. He says, he causes the grass, the grass, he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man. You see, wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Wine is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Wine is one of the emblem of the Holy Spirit. He says, and hoy to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The wine and the oil are the emblems of the Holy Spirit. There is a wine in the garden of God, which is the church of God. And that wine and oil is the Holy Spirit. The wine and oil in the garden of God is the Holy Spirit. The wine maketh glad the heart of man. If you are in this kingdom and you are not happy, that means that you are not in this kingdom. It shows that you are not in this kingdom. You cannot be in this kingdom and be sad. Because this kingdom is the kingdom of gladness. If you are part of the kingdom, the spirit of gladness will possess you. And the oil to make his face to shine. Your face must shine. It must shine. It does must shine. It is a must for your face to shine in this kingdom. Because there is a spiritual oil that makes the face to shine. There is a spiritual oil that makes the face to shine. And there is a bread that strengthens man's heart. This is the revelation knowledge of God. The bread of life is Jesus. And that bread is the revelation knowledge of Jesus. The totality of that revelation knowledge is the bread of life. You cannot take all this and not produce fruit. It is impossible. <laughs> you cannot take the wine, the oil and the bread and still not produce fruit. It is impossible. You cannot be taking this kind of spiritual diet and still remain barren. It is impossible. These are powers that break barrenness. These are powers that break barrenness in this kingdom. In verse 16 of that same Psalm 104, verse 16, can you please project verse 16? Thank you. Thank you. It says, The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The trees of the Lord who are the trees of the Lord? They are the spiritual vegetations. The trees of the Lord are the children of the kingdom. They are full of sap. You see, the trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. We are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted in his garden. The trees of the Lord represent the children of the kingdom, the citizens of heaven on earth. And God made vegetation, and we are the vegetations. He planted the garden of Eden, and that garden of Eden is the kingdom of God on earth right now. In Genesis, let's look at Genesis. 
quickly look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 to 30. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 to 30. It says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be it shall be for me. In verse 30, please. Verse 30. Let's take it together. I want to go. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the Yea, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. He has given every green herb for meat. We've received green herb plants for meat, and he made vegetations. He did not give us meat for meat, he gave us plants for meat. He gave us plants for food. He gave us the secret of longevity. And that secret of longevity is feeding on plants, not animal. Can you please write this down? Write it, please. Write this down, please. The secret of longevity is feeding on plants, not on animals. I have given every green herb for meat and it was sold. I'm not saying feeding on animal is a sin. I'm not saying feeding on animal is sin. I'm not saying feeding on animal is corruption. But what I'm saying is that the secret of longevity is plants. Can see the mystery of vegetation. And God made vegetation. Vegetation represent fruitfulness because the color of vegetation is green and that is why we must be produ productive we can also make our vegetation we can make our vegetation in this world whatsoever you are creating try to create your vegetation whatsoever you are creating try to create your vegetation that will produce fruits and the fruit will carry their own seed. That will produce fruits, and the fruit will bear, will carry their own seed. Create investments that can last forever. Create investments that has future. Create investment that can produce every other investment. Create investment that can produce another investment. Create something that can create. Create something that can multiply. And you will grow wings in the realm of exploits. Help me to grow wings, Lord. Can you tell Father? Help me to growing flood. I want to fly. I want to fly in my world. Help me to grow wings in this world. I want to fly. Help me to grow wings. Help me to grow wings. Balush kalabalaku.